Welcome to Wake Up with Dr. Cheryl. I'm Dr. Cheryl Shire. I have a PhD in financial management and business administration. I'm a minister, wealth healer, and author of two books, Wealth Transformation and Journey to Frequency for Wealth Transformation. You can get those on Amazon. Wake up to being free of any unhappy thoughts and feelings. Are you waking up? to your spiritual and divine, unconditional love for which you can have freedom of wealth. We must have discipline. We must discipline our minds every day to think positive and productive thoughts and connect with our higher self. And this is true freedom from the change of limit, chains of limitation that we all have, can do to ourselves. In order to begin a relationship in inner peace with ourselves, we must first develop a relationship with our God, our higher self. I'd like to take, get, uh, tell a joke. A mechanic was re removing a cylinder head from the motor of a Harley motorcycle when he spotted a well-known heart surgeon in his shop. The heart surgeon was there waiting for the service manager to come and take a look at his bike. The mechanic shouted across the garage, Hey, Doc, can I ask you a question? The surgeon, a bit surprised, walked over to the mechanic working on the motorcycle. The mechanic straightened up, wiped his hands on the rag, and asked, So, Doc, look at this engine. I open its heart, take valves out, fix them, put them back in, and when I finish, it all works like new. So how come I, got, I get such small salary and you get the big bucks when you and I are doing basically the same work? The surgeon paused, smiled, and leaned over and whispered to the mechanic, try doing it with the engine running. Have you been practicing loving yourself unconditionally? And I know you hear this many times on my show, and we need to hear it even more. The last segment, I left you talking about how important your brain power is and how precious your mind is, how your divine connection your is. As soon as you think negative thoughts that you are aware of, just let them go, delete them, put them in the trash, remove them permanently. This is true freedom. Just replace them with positive and loving words. We need to reinforce unconditional loving words as much as possible, especially with all the negative things happening in the world. I do not watch the news. I know the negative things are happening out there. However, we need to take lead from Mother Teresa. She said, I once was asked why I don't participate in anti-war demonstrations. I, she said that I never do that, but as soon as you have a pro-peace rally, I'll be there. Men and women need to work together with all our qualities that we both have as women and men to complement each other. But I guess the pendulum has had to swing opposite direction. To get the balance, what I mean is, it has been out of balance with all the men at the top and the white collar crime and greed that has been taking place. My vision is to see men and women working together, using both of their strengths and qualities to use the best that they have strong and sustainable leaders together. Another quality that was so important that I haven't focused on is gratitude. When you have a grateful attitude and heart, even when you aren't getting what you think you want, there is something better unfolding. When you have enough faith, then it's easier to have a grateful mindset. Being grateful for your money and wealth, no matter how much you have, is keeping the door open for more, depending on what your desire, what you have a goal for. Don't focus on not enough. I start my day in gratitude every day. Then my meditation and prayer for all my family, friends, and all the people on the planet. So be grateful for the small stuff. What happens daily? And then you will be able to handle the big stuff. We have Chris Scott with us. Welcome, Chris. Welcome. I'd like to uh, give his background. Chris is a founder and CEO of a San Francisco-based company called Makeup Gourmet. He is also the author of The Cosmetic Counter Survival Guide, How to Buy and the Right Skin Care, How to, how to Buy the Right Skin Care and Makeup. He was the creator and host of the Comcast-produced TV show, Makeup Gourmet. 
Prior to starting Makeup Gourmet in San Francisco, Chris was a leading Chanel beauty national artist for over two decades. The company's Mugshot Studios is in downtown San Francisco, which provides production space and services to makeup, fashion, video, and photography industries. He also currently teaches fashion makeup at the Academy of Art University. He has two upcoming books for both the professional and consumer of beauty expertise. Well, Ooh. welcome. That's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, great to see you. Good to see you. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. Well, I, you know that our theme is around wealth and spirituality. Right. And I think probably <clears throat> I'll ask you what wealth means to you first. Sure. Well, I mean, it, it means abundance most more than anything else to me abundance in in money uh, just money I, or? well no because you can be wealthy in you know many facets of your life but um because the the word spiritual is sort of attached to wealth you know uh, especially in your books um for me wealth um it seems well off seems mm -hmm. like you're set you have it made mm -hmm. you're doing you know you're doing great mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, right that you know it has all those connotations well since you are living your purpose and passion right by being the makeup gourmet um and you're living your purpose and passion what do you what have you where have you found the source of your true wealth the through so this, through this. Well, you know, I was thinking about about all of this, you know, um, prior to coming here and, and having this conversation. And, and it's kind of funny because I'm passionate about quite a few things. Um, and because of that, um, it, it seems like what I do is I, I sort of latch on to a passion and I, have a, and I have a good time with it and I toss with it and I play with it and I really exercise it really well. Is this like with your gourmet, the gourmet or other things? Or other things. Yeah, um, I, I ran a theater company for um, 10 years in San Francisco and my, oh, my, wow. my MFA is in theater. And so I really enjoy performance. But there was a certain point where as I as I was going along and doing all this theater that I one day just kind of said, you know, I, I, I don't think this is the only thing I want to do, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, I, I was trained as a makeup artist and I was really enjoying it. What I was really enjoying was the experience that my client was having. Um, I, and, like a transformational experience? Yeah, you know, just... Their, and, the transformation of their beauty of what you did? Yeah, and also them having these... I see it in their eyes, these aha moments, where I show them a particular technique, I share, you know, I share with them something, and what I loved hearing, what I heard a lot, was why hasn't anybody ever told me this before? And you know, don't you love it when you're able to like, say something in such a way that someone goes, oh, that's what they now, mean. Now see, to me, this is a perfect example of the spiritual application to wealth. Because it's coming through you, the creative flow is coming through you, and look what you get in return from your clients. Yeah. That, to me, is a perfect example of putting a practical application to the spiritual wealth. Do, do you, you understand? I agree. I, and, you know, it's very funny because women have always, a lot of women have told me, and I, and I know it's true, that they hear my voice in their head every morning when they start to do their eyebrows. Because I'm very specific with, I teach more the why than the how. Because if someone understands why they're doing something, mm -hmm. it, it, it means so much more. And then they know, do I want to have this in my life? You know, the, it's, you, have to, you have to really embrace the why. And it's funny because I, I just sort of kind of tripped up on that as I was writing my most recent um, like training manual was I thought, I'm not going to talk about how first because how is easy. I mean, how is like ABC, mm -hmm. but the why we do things is is the why. And, you know, and, the, and that's the big question: Why do we exist? Or you know, the, you know, those kind of fundamental <laughs> questions. And so, if you can answer the why, people, everything else just sort of falls into place. So I'm, I'm enjoying yeah, that process. That's that's good. And and. The more I'm hearing, the more I see the integration of what 
I, my purpose and passion is coming through you. And maybe this is also helping you to look at it from, from a wider, right, wider angle. Well, sh sure. So let me ask you this. Um, what is the conversation that you have with yourself and others about abundant thinking to manifest success in your work life mm. or in your life? Well, I guess, you know, every, every day is a gift. Mm. Every day, Amen. right? Every Amen. day is a gift, and it's going to have its opportunities, and it's going to have its challenges. Yeah. And just and challenges are opportunities. Okay, and opportunities could be challenging. <laughs> so maybe it's the same thing. Yes. But regardless of, of, you know, what your perspective is of what's happening to you during the day, um, I just try to be sort of in the moment. Um, and that's the best place to be. Yes. You know, so my process and what I do, a lot of what I do is very creative and very creation. And both of those states of mind or states of being are great because it's a time when we stop judging ourselves mm -hmm. and we stop, you know, becoming self-aware of everything we do, how we look, how we sound, all that, you know, whatever, that, that person outside of us kind of looking in and you're just really digging it. You're just in the moment. Um, and so I strive for that a lot. And it's interesting because I've done makeup for so many years and and you know I can just take a face and go to town um, but the tricky part for me is I've chose to make it a business mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so in so the last couple which of years have, which you have to apply different uh, tools different oh yeah you know, <laughs> exactly. to, to monetize all of it <laughs> right yeah it's like someone was so asking what, what is your shift with that which what's you know what's your mental shift with that well it's a little bit of a struggle uh to be to be quite honest in terms of the mental shift because um i'm slowly finding the joy of the business aspect of what i do and what i really strive to do is always be in the moment with what I'm doing and as a as a small business owner you are there is a every morning you have to reprioritize mm -hmm. what you're going to do that day mm -hmm. and then every hour because you think oh good by 12 o'clock I'm going to be here and then by when 12 o'clock comes you're nowhere even close you haven't even started <laughs> on what was supposed to be 12 o'clock right mm -hmm. and uh so you, I just learned to cut myself some slack. I also told <laughs> another friend of mine who runs another makeup beauty school, mm -hmm. as I said, we, we just have to be in the eye of the storm. As long as we can put ourselves in the center of what we're doing, we're going to, you're, you're okay. It's when you like stick your arm out and get, you know, you get distracted or sucked it away into one aspect of the business or the other that and, and, and fear starts to set in. So, so would you say that that takes discipline and focus to stay in that place? Yeah, a lot. I mean, a lot. I mean, that's, that's what I talk about because we have to discipline. We must discipline. We need to discipline ourselves mentally. Yeah all the time right to not be in old programming or, or fear or lack mentality around what we're doing because I see you as a creative business person and monetizing that you know it's like it just let it flow it, yeah it, it just let it flow and I've listened to that voice a lot more lately and really you know I heard someone said recently um, I was at a forum and they said your message has to be you know a lightning bolt to the heart and we're, yeah. we're you know where it bypasses <laughs> people's brains and and I thought well what is the lightning bolt to my heart and then and how can I express that because that's really the core of getting a getting someone's attention but really you know making sense to somebody so um, that's been the part of the process of my writing these next two books is that and they're really kind of the same message but one is more geared towards a makeup artist professional and one is more geared towards um, just what I call the end user but still it's the same concept of why do we do what we do and what is at the core of, of what we're trying to create when we do makeup right um, and that's been uh, it's been helpful to find the lightning bolt so 
what do you think is the lightning bolt to your wealth? I just think being really... I mean, you know, wealth is, you know, covers, you know, right. a broad picture. It isn't just money. I, I, I get that. You know, and that's that's not where I'm... I mean, that's part of it. Right. And But the wealth of what you're doing. Right. So how, how do you apply that to make that that lightning bolt go right to the heart? Um... Well, I mean, it just depends on really what you you know what your discipline is and what your skill set is. But I just think just being really true to yourself, and you know, often people will tell you what the lightning bolt is. I mean, you may you just may be jabbering on, and all, and someone goes, "Whoa," you know. Again, like I said earlier, yeah, right, no one's ever right. said that to yeah. me before. Well, I had that experience with with going to one of your classes. I never knew about the heart. So, you Part know, thank things. you. You're How, welcome. Yeah. And, the, and what's, what's really great about that particular theory, uh, the wealth of it, is that the more I apply it and the more I examine it, the more it's, I mean, it's going beyond theory. It's almost becoming a theorem at this point. It's almost becoming a fact. And I just, and, and the thing I'm really trying to do right now is try to disprove it. Because... Now, I, I explain that a little bit more. I'm trying to understand totally what you mean. Well, my concept of a face with a heart and how... Do you know how, how absolutely beautiful that is? I, I never, ever heard of that before. And to me, you know, heart, right. love, spirit. Right. I know, I know. It's, it's, see, it's, it's all connected. I know. It, it, that's, that is the beauty of it. And it's, and it's not by accident. It's but, so much fun to every single person that I'm able to take them on that journey with me and then go, okay, go. Yeah. Yeah, it's oh, fun. That's wonderful. Oh, um, so what's the best advice that you can give our viewers about having spiritual application to wealth w with your best interpretation? Best advice, you know, hmm. you know what advice is? Well, yeah, I, mean, I know I got it. I understand. I maybe advice is the wrong word, but, uh, you know, um, Right. That's the best word I can come up with right yeah. now. Right. Suggestions, maybe, is a better word? Well, it, you know, it's corny, but it's true. It's, it's what you're passionate about, what you feel. Don't, don't second-guess what the universe is telling you, ever. Yeah. Um, because that is so your... So listen to your intuition. Listen to your gut. All the time. And don't listen to naysayers. And, you know, if something really just intrigues you... You know, never, never ever censor that impulse because that's who you are, whether you know it or not. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's two words for, you know, when they talk about genius, and I'm not saying that I'm a genius, but I'm just saying inspiration, let's just say, muse. They, they used to call it the genius, which meant that once in a while you're going along and all of a sudden you have this inspired thought. Mm -hmm you've been visited by the genius. Mm -hmm. And around the Renaissance, we started talking about this person is genius. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot to live up to, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so I do believe that when the genius visits you, pay attention. Say, thank you, genius, for yes. visiting me right now because I haven't, I've never met you before, and this is great. Yeah, see, that to me is God, our spirit, uh, well, whatever, know, what, divine yeah. intelligence, exactly. whatever you want to call it. Right. We're coming to you as you, and just like it comes to me as me. And just listen to it and go, whoa, okay, um, thanks. Now, now you've left me with this new way of thinking that, uh, you know, either you decline you know, to, to move with that, or you, or you embrace it and go, okay, where does this take me? Right? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, what, that's my advice. Where does it take you? So it, it's being open and listening to it. Yeah. And yeah. not, yeah, don't censor. Don't censor, you know, because that is divine communication, you know? So with that um, in mind, I mean, I know that there's a practical application to all of this, but do you think that comes as a secondary thing, you know, as far as you, you get the genius and you take it the next step to apply it? Sure. And then, and then 
you know, I mean, don't you think that the genius or the creative energy comes first and then the wealth, and I'm talking about the physical wealth, comes secondary? Uh, if, if you manifest it in that direction. What do, what do you mean by that? Well, meaning if, what, if you are motivated, you know, to paint a flower and you've never thought you could paint a flower before, you know, then now you have a beautiful flower painting of a flower that you painted. And you maybe could only do one painting great your whole life, but there it is. That's wealth. Because you, because you, you were able to manifest yeah. what you did. And then the other manifestation is um, the manifestation of, well, this is a concept that not only am I passionate about, but I can, you know, I think you were saying monetize, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, so there's something that I can share with others, find a way to share that with people. Um, and that, you know, that takes a, that takes effort. That takes a little bit of thinking and a little bit of... You mean to monetize it? Yeah, you know, and collaboration and cooperation and all those things that are vital if you want to grow, you know, a seed, right? Right, right. And, and if you have that goal, um, you know, and I think all of us have some goals, maybe some don't, but, you know, have a goal of, you know, I don't know if you have a goal of how much, you know, it, that you're thinking of, or if, if it just flows naturally and you feel comfortable with what's happening. Life is funny that way, isn't it? Um, Ebbs and flows? Well, in, in the sense that it's funny. Um, in that I've always lived modestly. I don't believe that I need a lot, mm -hmm. you know, to get by, because you just don't. Yeah, you know? I mean, well, material things sometimes uh, replace the lack of love that one has. I've met very wealthy, wealthy men that are people that, you know, are striving after and after and after it and keep going, and it's like there's a missing piece yeah. inside. The so, satisfied, you know, just be satisfied, ha have a sense of satisfaction. But my point is that um, I'm at a point in my life now where, you know, maybe I don't want to go to the office every day mm -hmm. or, you know, as much as I do. And I really haven't, what's funny is I probably never worked as hard as I have now because I'm doing something that's new to me, which is, you know, actually running a business. Um, and so there's a lot more tangibles involved. Yeah, the and administration type administration of, of and just, part of it. Yeah, and, and, and creating product that represents my message and, you know, packaging that in such a way that people get it, mm -hmm. that they see it and they go, oh, my God, this is so great. This is perfect for me. You know, those kinds of things. And it's, it's fun. Uh, but, you know, it's, but at a certain point, you, sometimes you just going to go, you know, a 10-hour day is a 10-hour day or plus, you know, or longer. Yeah. And sometimes you just kind of want to. But if you love, if you love what you're doing, then you, you I mean, from speaking for myself, if I right. love what I'm doing, I kind of lose track of the time, except that I need to keep my balance. That's what I mean. That's what I mean. I've, my, some of my friends have said to me and with my significant other that um, I've always, they've always envied how much I live a balanced life because I will, at a certain point, I could go make, amass more wealth, you know, in terms yeah, of money. financial wealth, right, money. money. I could go amass that if I wanted to, but I'm like, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go on this trip. We're going to do, you know what I mean? So, yeah, I, so far I, I've been pretty balanced. I feel like I put things off. So to sum it up, what, what do you think, how, how, since we began this conversation in the beginning, how how do you think you'll apply the spiritual wealth to your business now? Any different? I'm all, I'm always a sharer. Um, I I always do events that like I just did a fundraiser for a school and I do things for Glide Memorial and for me it's always about the community you live in and and when we we help and assist and do for others we're helping ourselves. Yeah, I. I mean that's just a given. Yeah, it's just I mean, totally a given. I mean, I mean, I mean maybe that's that's true. Uh, I I never think of it that way. I always just think, well, what would be really a cool thing to do? And and thing? not not that you want to get something in return. You're giving from your heart. Right. But automatically. It, yeah. It, it, you're you're giving to yourself. You're giving to others. Yeah. And that's that's the the spirit that comes out, and that's wealth that comes out too. Yeah. So. 
Anyway, thank you so much. This has been a wonderful <laughs> interlude, been. and yeah, I appreciate great. you being here so much and with your thoughts and your sharing. And hopefully you and I and our guests will have a little bit of uh, deeper understanding yeah. of what this is all about. I'd love to hear some feedback because this is, this is a good conversation. Oh, thank you so much. Thank um, you so much for joining us. And please love yourself unconditionally. Let go of fear or not having enough. And don't listen to negative people. And I'll leave you with this. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. That's by Maya Angelou. Risk is part of God's game, alike for men and nations. And that's by Warren Buffett. You can't separate peace from freedom because no one can be at peace unless he has his freedom. And that was by Malcolm X. So think and be happy and eat healthy. Good nutrition f f feeds the mind. And there have been studies done on the mind in different cultures. And one that I use consistently is from India. The Indian people hardly ever develop Alzheimer's and dementia because they use turmeric daily. Don't forget, feed your spirit, your spirit with love. So bye for now until the next time.